The Mac Mini is officially available today, and it has been completely redesigned. And we all knew that it was going to be tiny, but I guess I never fully realized just how tiny it is. Usually when I do videos, I try to hold up the product while I'm uh, in front of camera. And with computers, I obviously can't do that. They're just too big, but uh, look at this thing. Now, you can look at all the specs you want, but until you actually unbox it, just it's hard to imagine a computer so powerful being just this small that it can fit in the palm of my hand. So as you can see here, I'll put it up against some other products, but it's quite a bit smaller than the original Mac Mini or the previous generation Mac Mini, and then just a little bit bigger than an Apple TV, which is, again, absolutely wild to think about the computing power that's in this machine being just a little bit bigger than an Apple TV. Taking a look around the device, this is actually the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and you wouldn't know because there's no difference between the M4 and the M4 Pro, at least in terms of just looking at it. But on the back of this machine, we have three Thunderbolt 5 ports. The other one has Thunderbolt 4. So this is one of the first machines, along with the other MacBook, to have Thunderbolt 5 ports. And there's also an HDMI and Ethernet, and then this is where you plug it in for power. That's it on the back. And then on the front, we have two USB-C ports and one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So obviously a machine targeted towards creators. I would have loved to have seen uh, an SD card slot on the front or anywhere for that matter. Maybe this would just be too much like a Mac Studio if that was the case. And there needs to be a little bit of a, I don't know, distinguishing factor between the two. And basically it's a Mac Studio Lite in terms of design, in my opinion. Now, the bottom of the Mac Mini wouldn't be anything that I'd normally talk about, although there is some, you know, this is where the new design part comes from, and this is where the cooling kind of goes up from the bottom, and it makes sure that it doesn't overheat. But in my announcement video, I did talk about the power button, but it became a huge deal. So let's talk about it again. Uh, I never turn off my machines. It's very rare that I would fully power them down. They're using a lot less energy uh, when in sleep mode. And so I like to keep it on so that it's getting regular updates and all of that. Uh, and then when I go to power it down every you know few months or whatever, it's, you just turn it off via the computer settings and then you'd have to push the power button to turn it back on. And that would be once again every few months, if that. So the power button being on the bottom uh, isn't that big of a deal to me, but it might be to you. And if you're going to mount this and you have a mount that might not be able to you know, easily access the power button, then I understand that this might not be the, the Mac for you. But hopefully there will be mounts out there that figure this out and that it won't be that big of a deal. But yeah. Uh, it's on the bottom. It is what it is. It's so light that you can easily just kind of reach there in the back left and be able to turn it on if you need to. Now, before we get into the rest of this video, I just want to let you know more about today's sponsor, Clean My Mac. Is your Mac feeling slower, cluttered, or just not performing like it used to? It might be more than just too many files. Introducing the all-new Clean My Mac, the ultimate solution for keeping your Mac in top shape. With the new Smart Care feature, you can do more than just clean up your system. You'll know exactly how your Mac is performing in real time, and with just one click, you'll clean, optimize, and speed up your device. From cluttered downloads to system caches and development leftovers, Clean My Mac finds and removes up to 27% more junk than ever before, freeing up space for what really matters to you. Or are you perhaps worried about viruses and malware? Clean My Mac's Moonlock anti-malware engine scans and removes any threats with just one click, keeping your Mac safe from harm. But Clean My Mac doesn't stop there. Its new Mac Health Assistant helps you tackle battery drains, monitor performance, and even prevent overheating, all with the real-time tips and instant fixes. Think of Clean My Mac as your digital gardener. It nurtures and maintains your Mac, ensuring a clean and organized digital ecosystem. So let's refresh, enhance, and protect your Mac with the new Clean My Mac. Check the link in the description down below and try it free for seven days. Thanks, Clean My Mac, for sponsoring this video. Power button on the bottom, not a huge deal, but what is a big deal is just how powerful this machine can be. Now, I went with the M4 Pro, like I mentioned before, but there is a standard M4 option, and that starts at only $599. And if you have a .edu address, it's like $499, I believe, so even crazier of a price tag. And it offers 16 gigs of RAM standard, no more eight gigs, thankfully, and 256 gigs of storage for that base model. 
And then you can, of course, configure the RAM and storage uh, to your liking. And the base M4 model also comes with a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. Now, when it comes to this M4 Pro model, I went with the base pre-configured version, and that comes with 24 gigs of RAM standard and 512 of storage. And I believe the price was $1399. If I'm wrong, I'll leave it down here, but I believe it's $1399. That's what it comes pre-configured. Also with a 12 core CPU and a 16 core GPU, so more power there. And that'll help out those creators, coders, designers, all of the people that Apple was definitely targeting for this specific model of the Mac Mini. So obviously I have only had this machine for like a few hours. I just unboxed it, which by the way, in the box, you get the power cable and some you know, circular guides and that's about it. Uh, but I can give you a few baseline benchmarks when it comes to performance. But again, I haven't been able to use it for too long. But here's Geekbench scores uh, between the M2 Pro that I had before and the new M4 Pro. And then if anyone was wondering how the SSD speeds are in comparison to the previous model, we have some Blackmagic disk speed scores here. And the results look a little like this. Again, between the M2 Pro and the M4 Pro. So obviously, as you can see by these Geekbench scores, not only is single and multi-core scores a pretty significantly higher uh, on the M4 Pro than the M2 Pro, but also OpenCL and Metal for the GPU scores are pretty substantially higher. And even the SSD speeds are substantially higher. And so I don't know if this is going to translate in real world use or not. Uh, when I start getting out there and editing using After Effects, any of the you know pro applications that I would normally use, then we'll you know save my thoughts there for the for the uh, full review. But yeah, I don't know. The scores seem to indicate that this is a pretty modest upgrade between those two chips, the M2 Pro that I had before and the M4 Pro, which I was expecting it to be obviously a boost, but the scores are pretty high. So yeah, would love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think about the current performance for Geekbench and the SSD and Blackmagic speed test. I'll of course be doing a full review of this machine very soon. Also, we'll be um, taking a look at the M4 Max MacBook Pro very soon. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Uh, I used to use the M2 Pro as the machine for a lot of my podcast work. That's where we recorded on. That's where uh, all of the editing gets done on that and all of the archiving for storage and stuff like that. So this will now replace that machine and I'll be you know, using that over the next few weeks. And then of course we'll have our full review. One thing I am looking forward to seeing is if this machine gets the uh, Bluetooth issues resolved. I feel like every single desktop Mac that I have had with Apple Silicon over the years, uh, more specifically that M2 Pro Mac Mini. And then of course I use the M2 uh, Ultra Mac Studio and those machines for some reason, whenever you start connecting more than like three or four different Bluetooth devices, uh, audio issues start to happen and things start to cut out and drop. And that is kind of annoying. I will say it's, I, I feel like it's getting a little bit better. It doesn't happen as often, but yeah, I mean, it just hits a certain level of devices. And then all of a sudden my Bluetooth speaker will start to just, you know, crackle and cut in and out and drop signal and just not play audio, which is kind of frustrating at times. So hopefully this might fix it, but who knows? I'll let you know. And of course, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about the current uh, Mac Mini? And are you thinking of buying one? Or if you did, which one did you go with? Uh, I want to know all the specs and all of that and what you're going to use it for. And uh, yeah, what do you think about the current benchmarks that I did between the M2 Pro and the M4 Mac Mini, or the M4 Pro Mac Mini? Again, let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.